Elon Musk is going full Republican this week by getting me too would and talking about a Clinton campaign lawyer. He responded to this Jim Jordan tweet that said, Christopher Steele created the dossier, Glenn Simpson sold it to the press, Michael Sussman took it to the FBI, and Democrats and the media lied to you about it all. Elon responded with all true. Bet most people still don't know that a Clinton campaign lawyer using campaign funds created an elaborate hoax about Trump and Russia. Makes you wonder what else is fake and he linked to a BBC article about it where even they admitted Clinton lawyer lied to manipulate FBI over Trump. Someone responded, Elon out for blood now, love to see it. Elon said, I am indeed out for blood. Pretty crazy stuff. It's wild to have not only the richest person, but a beloved person in tech and left-wing politics really going out on a limb to say this stuff. In other stories, you've probably heard that we're sending $40 billion to Ukraine. Billions of those dollars are going to rebuilding their economy, quote unquote, while our own economies and shambles. And I just want to let you know I did this math. Around 100,000 restaurants were wiped out of existence because of the evil government lockdowns and what I would consider authoritarian, communist, and one of the biggest exchanges of wealth in modern history. With that $40 billion that we're giving to another corrupt foreign country that is not a democracy, it's an authoritarian dictatorship in which the leader Zelensky has banned 11 political parties, consolidated the media, and goes after most people in his country who disagree with his agenda, we're fueling $40 billion to a dictatorship. But if we were to give that money to 100,000 restaurants that were wiped out of existence to try to restart themselves, according to my math, that's $400,000 per restaurant. And to make the story even more crazy, the same Senate that passed the $40 billion to Ukraine actually within the last week shut down $48 billion to US businesses. America's politicians are so corrupt in the Democratic and Republican Party that if you're loyal to America and you serve the American people's interests, you will be hated on by the mainstream media, you will be hated by the political establishment, and most people in both parties will turn on you for the crime of actually serving the people of your country instead of special interests, lobbyists, big pharma, or some foreign country like Israel and Ukraine, that it's just become status quo to funnel billions of dollars to and you're a mean, hateful person if you question them. They lie so much about Ukraine, it's insane. In 2018, mainstream articles like The Hill were reporting that Congress was banning arms to a Ukraine militia linked to neo-Nazis. Now, if you suggest what The Hill and most Western media said for the last decade, they'll say that it's Russian propaganda. Oh, that's what Putin's saying. Our own media used to say that until that faction of Ukraine turned into heroes and were deserving of our money. They literally linked them to neo-Nazis and banned arms to them just a few years ago. But now if you dare question the fact that they have money to give to a foreign country and not your businesses, you're buying into Russian stuff. It's ridiculous. Now who voted in favor of American interests in my opinion? The 11 senators that voted no, all Republicans. The Democratic Party is the pro-war party now. Blackburn, Boozman, Braun, Crapo. I had no idea there was somebody named Crapo. Haggerty, Holly, Lee, Lummis, Marshall, Rand Paul, and Tuberville. Congratulations to those 11 Republicans. Thank you for apparently being the only people not sold out in the Senate. Now this is where it gets interesting. Who did vote to send your money to that corrupt foreign country? Ted Cruz, who I consider one of the biggest con artists on the planet. His whole Twitter is just filled with, our economy's failing, look at the left wing, look at AOC, she doesn't want to give money to Israel, her der anti-Semitism, ooh der der der. That's his whole shtick. His whole life is controlled opposition. In 2021, the fraudulent Ted Cruz was trying to do vaccine vaccination segregation and make it so only vaccinated people could take their mask off of an airplane. This year he joins the corrupt Democrats, but he hopes you don't notice because he just points to the left all the time on his Twitter account to try to fit in. Ted Cruz voted to send your money away. Of course, Lindsey Graham did. Marco Rubio, Mitch McConnell, Tom Cotton, Tim Scott, Ben Sasse, Mitt Romney, Rick Scott. And in the House, there were 57 people, of course, all Republicans who opposed. People like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Paul Gosar. But the funny part is zero House Democrats, including the squad, voted against approving another $40 billion for the Ukraine proxy war. All of these fake Democrats, oh, we're anti-war, oh. No, they're not. Seriously, the people's movement is coming through the Republican Party. It's not as many as it should be, but there are no Democrats that are on your side, none. Anybody that's like a progressive type Bernie person, you're living a lie. You might as well vote Republican and try to get some real people in. But that's what we're dealing with here in America. If you vote Republican, they'll pretend to be your friend for a couple of years, but when it's time to sell the vaccine for Pfizer and Moderna, 
they'll all get in line. When it's time to lock the country down and print trillions of dollars like an out of control psychopath socialist, all your favorite Republicans are in line. The only one who really does the right thing all the time, it seems like, is Thomas Massey, and the media hates him. He's the only one recently that didn't vote for this anti-Semitism condemning bill, and they're trying to say that he's an anti-Semite now. It's like if they were passing a BLM racist condemnation bill and you voted against it, and they're like, oh, you must be a racist. It's like, no, the First Amendment's pretty clear. You don't stop hate with a bunch of lopsided racial religious speech laws. That's not how you stop hate or stop violence. You actually increase it when you do that but these politicians don't care. Your country's so sold out, there's only one person who understands what the First Amendment means and that you don't stop political, racial, or social violence by restricting speech and showing people that the politicians of America will pass more laws for a foreign country than they will for the people of this country. But right now, although there are dozens of Republicans who really are decent people, they're still in the minority. It's up to us to call out fraudulent losers like Ted Cruz, because their whole shtick is, I'm not the left, and the left's whole shtick is, I'm not the right. And they hope that you don't realize, when push comes to shove, they will send trillions of your dollars into the money go brrr printing machine, or to the foreign country of the month. Now I'm going to answer a few questions from patreon.com slash rare talk, my Patreon channel, where one of the perks is that I will answer answer your questions every now and then. Let's look to Patreon. And thank you to everybody for $5 a month supporting my show. I appreciate it greatly. Claire said, I wonder how we can get the message out that the Green New Deal, Build Back Better, and the climate change agenda isn't really about saving the planet. As they say, it's about control and it's actually greenwashing to the nth degree. Many of the solutions can end up making the planet worse off in the end. Well, I agree, Claire. One way that's really helping get the message out is Elon Musk has been going off about that because since they hate him now because he's telling too much truth, they're kicking him out of all these little green new climate things and he's starting to expose them and say they don't really care about the environment, they don't care about any of this stuff. But I think the best way to really counter that agenda is with compassion and without being too snarky about it. I know I've reached a lot of people by explaining I'm a true environmentalist, clean the air, clean the water. I do believe that the climate is shifting. Every day the sun comes up, goes down every season. Climates are always changing, but I absolutely do agree that not only are they exaggerating about certain things, but more importantly, they're putting together solutions that really just take money, control, and power from the people, and they're not gonna have the impact that they say. So I think the best way to get that message across to the people who need to hear it the most is to let them know that you're not like a cold-hearted gas guzzler that wants to just destroy the planet because too often republicans do sound like that like they'll just be like i don't care about the environment i'm just gonna do what i want and it's like that doesn't get through to the other side because then they look at you and they're like oh this side really would destroy earth before they actually did what was good for us so just looking like a cold hearted, you know, gas guzzling capitalist is not the answer. I think through compassion, empathy, and being like, no, I, of course I wanna keep the environment clean, but how they're doing it is not right. I think that's the best way to get through to people. And then they'll probably listen to our side more. And I agree with you. It's a total power grab and it's not what they say. Rosita said, do I think the US will dump any agreement or treaty with the UN? Well. Similar to what Thomas Massey said, he said a treaty that we signed does not supersede our constitution. So they will try, I think, to rule us and control us in the UN. And they successfully, I think, did so in 2020. And they did it not through a treaty or a law, but they got major corporations like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube to push their propaganda and basically just say, if you disagree with this foreign agency, then we will take you off of social media. So it's so important what Elon Musk is talking about to get the public sphere back on our side because they've kind of superseded law and just collaborated with big corporations in order to control us that way. So I don't know what the treaty will do personally, but they've been trying for decades to really supersede the American interests and the American way, and they'll keep trying. I'm not too afraid of the treaty, but it is worth looking at. And I don't know if it's gonna last in a court, but they do have enough allies in American corporations. Daisy Butler said on patreon.com slash rare talk, hey, thanks so much for taking questions. I always appreciate your educated opinion and how you do research for us, ha. Huh? What do you think of Ron DeSantis and if he's going to run in 2024, does that mean he'd be running against Trump? How do we get a moderate to run or win an election or will we forever be a two-party country? Well, with Ron DeSantis, I think he's doing a very strong governance of Florida. 
He probably won't run against Trump. I don't think he will. There's probably a better chance of Rand Paul running against Trump. And uh, I think Trump definitely needs a challenge. I think he's gotten a little too comfortable. He knows that people prefer him over Biden, rightfully so. So I feel like we're gonna get stuck in the same rut that we left off in 2020, where competition is great. And I would love to see Rand Paul and Ron DeSantis all compete. And that's when we would get the best of all sides. But I don't think Ron DeSantis would go against Trump and he might not want to leave Florida. He's been important for them. My question mark with Ron DeSantis is his foreign policy. We don't really know his foreign policy. People are really good in the Republican Party pretending they're on our side, like Ted Cruz, for instance. He acts like he's your best friend, but he's really a total fraud. And Donald Trump, although he did a lot of things that were suspect in 2020, he does have a better foreign policy than most Republicans, and we don't really know what Ron DeSantis' foreign policy is. To me, Rand Paul is head and shoulders better than Donald Trump, and we could achieve some real change if we had somebody like that in office. I will probably be supporting Rand Paul over Donald Trump in the 2024 primaries, but I don't know if he has what it takes to win. So I would love to see Ron DeSantis challenge Trump. I think Trump needs to be challenged, not just from the right, but from somebody who's even more America first. That would bring the best out of everybody, but I don't know to answer your question if he'll do that. Karen said, who are the entities that would fund speaking tours, more exposure without acting as a lobbyist, is expecting something from you in return? If, I'd love it if your message would reach more people in the size and deep pockets of those companies, et cetera, that support politicians. Is it possible or by its very nature, is it not possible? Uh, to answer your question, could somebody fund a speaking tour that wasn't going to control me or other people? I think absolutely. Right now, one thing that's inspiring in conservative politics and American culture in general, I think people are tired of the political correctness. A lot of music artists are boring. People are looking for podcasts and something real and authentic. So I think a company like Daily Wire is really capitalizing on the fact that everybody's looking for conservative entertainment. And there's a lot of room for other people to do that to a different extent. So the question is, who's involved in the tour and speaking industry that sees the potential of myself and others and wants to act on it? It's absolutely possible. I think um, it really comes down to me and other people. What would you sacrifice to do that? And I'm pretty good at business and holding my own. So I'm not really worried about someone trying to take my stuff. I wouldn't allow it and I wouldn't you know, water down my message for anybody. So it's absolutely possible. It's just right now, I can only speak for myself. I'm busy doing a million things and I'm always trying to level up, do tours, etc. But I don't have the expertise in that field. And I'm also always working on what I do best, which is videos, etc. And I'm always entertaining phone calls, business opportunities, but nobody's really come forward and fully pulled it off for me. People have tried and people have mentioned it, but this movement needs some business people, some people that are great at what they do. So I think it's open. If you're an inspired person, I'm sure you could get involved with a lot of people because a lot of content creators like myself are kind of new to this and we're not beloved by the mainstream media and the mainstream entertainment, etc. A lot of opportunity, a lot of people that are always looking for help and it just takes the right person with that motivation. So no, I think it's very possible. It hasn't happened for me yet, but I've gotten close. And for instance, real quick, without being too wordy, all these hats at godblesshats.com and dreamrare.com, I was doing it through a distributor until somebody came to me and said, Anomaly, I love your videos. I can help you get them stitched, get them printed. We could buy them wholesale, warehouse them. And it worked out. You know, he did exactly what he said he would do. He's been great. And I formed a business partnership with him over this. And, you know, we work together now. So stuff like that is always possible. It's just until it happens, I just keep doing what I can do and try not to get too big for my own britches and ruin what I'm doing. So great question. And to anybody involved in business and entrepreneurship, live shows, etc. man, this is such a hot time to be a non-normie and there's a lot of potential. Will Childers said, what are your thoughts on Elon Musk buying Twitter? The media is saying it's bad for free speech, ironic. Then it makes me wonder if he should kick off the CDC, World Health Organization, Biden, Fauci, et cetera, fight fire with fire. As a libertarian, I say free, keep free speech for all, but it would be nice to give them a taste of their own authoritarianism. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, it definitely would be funny, but I get a good vibe from Elon. I understand he's a billionaire. They constantly are doing this in politics where they do like controlled opposition stuff. They give you somebody that you like and they turn on you at the last second. So I feel like that's happened to me so many times. I'm not like head first, like he's my hero, he's gonna save me. Of course, this could be a setup in some way. I'm not I'm not paranoid, but I do feel that when some people are like, he's controlled, it's like, uh, whatever, it is what it is. I definitely feel like he understands the principle of free speech and democracy. He sounds kind of like he gets it. And as far as business people, the fact that he's so outspoken about how far the left has gone 
really gives me somewhat hope. I mean, I'm not like thrilled and being like, Elon's saving me, but when it comes to what he's talking about Twitter, he gets it. He gets the bot situation. He gets how, you know, democracies are supposed to work. And as far as in tech, the fact that he's even giving this much to us isn't guaranteed. Everybody else in tech is afraid to speak up about anything. Everybody else is in tech is super far left. They either agree with it or they just shut up about it. I've listened to Zuckerberg's speech speak and you know he plays the safe route. I think it's a blessing that Elon's even giving us this much. Even if he turns on a dime in a month or something, the fact that he's given the world this much culturally and said this much truth, you know, he doesn't have to do that. So I actually appreciate it and I think he's on the right path. And you know, it's up to us to not just sit back and wait as well. You know, we all gotta make moves and all contribute, but I like what Elon's doing and uh, you know, he's great to listen to in podcasts. He's very easy to listen to and understand and you know, he's saying all the right things and it feels right. So for now, I like him a lot more than everybody else in tech. Bill Dankanis said, why do people who listen to people like Yuri Bezmanov not believe that this is a communist agenda? He's telling people what is happening and what's going to happen, yet the masses rely on the same rhetoric spewed out by the mocking stream media. Well, it's a good question. I think what really woke my eyes up to communism, it's not just Yuri's speech, it's great, but I actually read the Communist Manifesto. And when I read it, it doesn't read like this, oh, we're gonna help everybody, and oh, this is this naive idea of sharing everything. That's not really what it reads like. And that was my interpretation from listening to conservatives about it. And when I read it, I realized it's a total power grab. It's like total control of the media, total control of banking, total control of private property, total control of communications and transportation. I mean, this is directly in the manifesto. So I think you have to be a real moron, no offense, to look at that and be like, oh, this is the government trying to help. No, it's the government taking over everything. And once you have all consolidation of power and no privatization, it's not going to lead to a utopia. This is why, no offense, people that tend to lean communist in the left wing, not trying to be rude because there are some decently put together communists, I guess. But for the most part, it's always people that are disheveled. They couldn't run a business if they tried. Like it's, it's a very weak ideology, I think, to run a country to be like, oh, yeah, it's like giving the government 100 percent power, giving people zero percent power and acting like that's going to work out. So when Yuri talks about it, I mean, some people don't listen to him or trust him, but it makes total sense. It's like, you know, he talks about how they were going for conservatives because the left wing are already useful idiots where he's like, you know, you don't even need to really do much with them because they're already self-sabotaging your, your country. You know, try to get into large established conservative media. The Yuri interviews are some, with G. Edward Griffin are some of the best interviews on the in the country. And you could ask this question with a lot of things. Why don't people listen to a lot? I don't know if it's ego or stubbornness. A lot of people, I think, either they're, they, they get a college degree and they have this massive ego about it, or they're just stubborn and they're not willing to admit when they're wrong. But I would say those are two things that are plaguing America and the world, which is just like this massive ego and stubbornness where people can have the truth right in front of them and, and they're not willing to learn and listen. Uh, a lot of programming, a lot of, like you said, mocking media, mockingbird media, brainwashing, school systems, culture, um, I don't know why people don't listen, but I think the best way to learn about communism, read the book, listen to people like Yuri, but really just, you know, expand your horizons and realize that it's a massive power grab. And that's why a lot of major people are left wing. And when they're not left wing, like Elon Musk, and he comes out as like a moderate Republican, look how they turn on him. That's the system turning on him. That's the media. They need total control of everything in order to operate. So last question I'm going to answer, and then I'll do this again next month. Serena said, are you familiar with the book Word Magic, The Powers of Occult Definition of Words by Pao Chang? I am not, but I'll look into it. I haven't heard anything about it until you mentioned it. I appreciate you guys for watching. And if you want me to answer your question in this fashion, I'll leave a status on patreon.com slash rare talk within the next couple weeks and answer more questions like that. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Patreon helps more than you would imagine because every month it's a specific block that I get and everything else fluctuates. I mean, even Patreon fluctuates, it goes down, etc. But to have that every month at the beginning of the month is so huge to my business model. Thank you to everybody at patreon.com slash rare talk. And just know if at any point you've supported on there, Facebook, you've really helped this operation go. Everybody helps sharing, watching. Sometimes people comment and say, no, I can't do that. It's no big deal. Even watching helps me a lot. There is ad revenue on my videos, so it's important to watch, but I do appreciate it greatly because running this independently without big corporations, big sponsors, etc., has not been the easiest thing in the world, but I will say people at Patreon, Facebook, and just people supporting on all platforms, even for free, 
has really made it easier than it could have been. So thank you guys so much. I work my ass off. I think people realize that and I'll keep doing so. Have a good one. I'll be back soon.